Okay, and that's us live, Bob. Mm -hmm. Say hi. <laughs> I just need to share this onto my group, which is Ben's Business Book Club, where we've discussed your book a few times, The Go-Giver. Oh, thank you. Okay, that's it now streaming. So, hi, Bob. Thanks for joining Ben's Business Podcast. My pleasure, Ben. Great to be here. It's good to have you here. So I discovered your book through a public talk that someone did, a guy called Richard Tubb. And I remember oh. the title of, it, of his talk. Do you know Richard? Oh, Richard's a great friend. Yeah. Okay. So he was uh, mentioning your book in his talk at the Content Marketing Academy. And his, the title of his talk, I remember it vividly, was it's remarkably easy to be remarkable but nobody does it <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it made it made a good impression on me and he also you know mentioned your book the go-giver so that's how I discovered the book and it ended up on this bookshelf for quite a long time and I have a priority reading list uh, and your book was quite high up there from hearing about that so I'm going to give you a quick introduction to people who don't uh, haven't heard of The Go-Giver or haven't heard of Bob Berg and uh, David Mann and a, a, a bit about you so that I've done some of my research. So you're a Hall of, Fame, Hall of Fame speaker on referrals, leadership and, and genuine influence. And you're helping people through The Go-Giver and The Go-Giver way on how to shift their mindset from getting and becoming a giver. So from getting to giving. And the, the Go Giver really put you on the map, I believe, as uh, one of the top 10 most motivational books ever written according to Inc. magazine. And then on top of that, you've had some other publicity from uh, like Pub, uh, HubSpot, 20 most highly rated sales books of all time, which I found really interesting. It's titled as a sales book so we can maybe talk a bit about that it's been published in 30 different languages and obviously there's a beyond series of different books like go give or sell more influence marriage and there's one more that i'm missing uh yeah the, well there's the go giver then there's the go giver uh, then there's go giver sell more which is the only book in the series it's not a parable then there's the go giver leader go giver influencer and then my co-author okay. jim Good man, he and his wife, Anna, uh, they wrote The Go-Giver Marriage. So that was their book. Okay, right. Okay. Yeah. So I have read The Go-Giver and I've read The Go-Giver Sell More. Uh, and I found them, I just finished that one there uh, in perfect timing for our interview. So <laughs> we'll talk about both of these books and, and, and beyond. So uh, yeah, would you like to give a quick introduction about who you are? Just a former broadcaster, former sales guy. Well, still a sales guy. Um, and uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Okay. I think you, you uh, recapped it very well. Good. <laughs> and so the first question I want to ask you is what is your purpose and mission? Like what you're, you've published a lot of books. You're a mentor to many people. and you've influenced a lot of people's lives. What is it behind all of this, all these actions? What is the purpose for you? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think like anything else, as human beings, we all have a desire to bring value to the world around us and do so in a way that brings us joy as well. So I think it's really a combination of that. It's uh, having had the opportunity to, to learn from some wonderful, wonderful mentors, okay. being a student of success, a student of, of people and of of people skills and communication if you will and um being able to bring a message that the marketplace uh has fortunately you know seemed to enjoy uh more with some books than with others <laughs> but, but you do your best and and i think that's really what it's all about it's making a difference and being able to to earn a good living doing something that you love yep yep i agree okay and um 
could you tell us a wee bit about I'm interested to know a bit about yourself as a as a person as as the author of the book um the go giver as well but um I would be interested to know a bit about life before you wrote the go giver because I, like I said that that's how a lot of people discovered how your influence came up a bit when this book sold over a million copies over time, obviously. I think that was published in 2007, uh, based on my research. Yeah. Um, so before that, that certainly, you know, brought my my speaking career to a, you know, to a, a new level. Uh, and thanks to John David Mann's, you know, amazing ability to write, because he's really the lead writer and okay. story cover our, our series. Mm -hmm. uh, as well as he's the author of about 25 or 30 books, about five of them on the New York Times bestsellers list, everything from mystery novels to uh, uh, to how to books to parables with many different different authors. Um, before that, I was probably most known for my book, Endless Referrals. Uh, yes. The subtitle was Network Your Everyday Contacts into Sales. And for the first I'd say 15 years of my speaking career, that's what I spoke on, okay. uh, the, the topic of endless referrals, which was really business networking, the cultivating yeah. of mutually beneficial give and receive win-win relationships and how to create those. Okay, yeah. And um, before you wrote that book, what what was your background? Had you started some businesses like before you became a teacher, a speaker, a mentor, what were some of the businesses that you uh, created these lessons off of? Obviously read a lot of books, but what, what was the experiences as well? Uh, really, I was just a, a good sales professional. I had okay. really learned to sell. Yeah. Uh, started out doing it. I certainly wasn't because I had knew nothing about sales. So I began to research and, and find out about sales, what it was, what it entailed. Uh, and probably what I loved the most was even more than the how-to aspect, it was the personal development aspect, because mm -hmm. I very quickly learned that success is an inside job, and you needed to, to build yourself on the inside in order for success to manifest itself on the outside. So uh, yeah. I, was, I was a good professional salesperson, and then I, I simply at one point, um, excuse me, <clears throat> in my last sales job before going to business for myself, I was sales manager of a company and I started being asked to teach others, uh, you know, other companies, what was working for me and for my sales team. And one thing led to another and okay. I, I just speaking business. So there was really nothing, uh, you know, uh, uh, there was nothing fantastic or magnanimous other than just being a really good salesperson based yeah. on what what based on what you learned in uh, through uh, yeah. knowledge and experience yeah from others yeah learning yeah. from others yeah you know, was, okay i'm a big believer in the concept you know we always hear about opm other people's money i think ope other people's experience and opw other people's wisdom gets us yeah. where we want to go a lot faster providing yeah. where we take the action and and do the yeah. work on what we learned yeah it's a massive massive shortcut mm -hmm said yes and the the writing process i'm quite interested to I, I really love the the way that you write or the way that you and uh, da uh, david uh, is it david john man john david man yes john david man uh, the way that john david man and yourself put this book together the go giver but the the other ones as well that are written in the same way as parables I really like how how does that writing process go? I guess did you have the idea and you came to John with the idea, and how do you what what's the process like and how do you structure these books? Yeah, initially I came to him with the idea because he was the editor in chief of a magazine I was writing a monthly column for, and even back then um, he was known within his niche as a, a brilliant brilliant writer and. Uh, he was certainly a brilliant editor, but I also knew him as a brilliant writer. So I had had this idea based on, you know, some of the principles from Endless Referrals, and I, which was a how-to book. You know, all of my books that I've written before the Go-Giver series with John, before and after, have all been how-to books. I'm a how-to author. Yeah. Step one, step, yeah. step three. So yeah. 
So I, I always thought, what if we could take the, the main premise of endless referrals, which was that all things being equal, people will do business with and refer business to those people they know, like, and trust. If we could take that basic idea and put it into a uh, parable. So I, I brought the idea to John uh, and then, uh, yeah, he, you know, he was very busy at the time. So he and, and Anna both had to, to kind of discuss whether this was something he wanted to take on. And uh, a few weeks later, he called me and said, yeah, I think we got something here. Let's do this. So okay. uh, we, we put the story idea together. We we went through, you know, John uh, was a very successful entrepreneur. Uh and as a as a writer, he's you know interviewed some of the most successful people in the world. As a speaker, I've had the opportunity to share the platform with some of the most successful people in the world. So we both ask a lot of questions of those people we meet. So okay. when John and I got together on this, it was it was really asking ourselves: so what are those things that successful people, sustainably successful? We weren't really interested so much in the fly by night or the, you know, but, but the sustainably successful people, what is it that they did? What is it that every single one of them did? Maybe consciously, or maybe even intuitively, very unconscious, right? Uh, and we found there were certain, certain things. Mm -hmm. And, and those five, which are, it turned out to be the laws of value, compensation, influence, authenticity, and receptivity. When people would put all five of those together in conjunction, not one, two, three, or even four of them, but all five, right. uh, they were successful and they were sustainably successful. Right. And so, you know, we, as we wrote it and, you know, again, John can just take anything and just boom, he's just so, so, so amazing. Um, so I was constantly amazed by what he put down there. And then we would discuss it. We'd go back and forth. We'd refine and, uh, you know, and it was, but, but he did the heavy lifting, you know, there's, there's no <laughs> question as it's so, yeah. so superb as a, as a writer and a thinker. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's like different personality types where you, you had the concept and the idea. And I feel like, I, I work a similar way. Cause I, the reason I ask these questions is obviously I'm considering and I'm writing a, a book myself. So Good. I've not got a title or anything for it, but we're starting to with a, a partner who has the ability to write and take these ideas and, and put it into a well-written book. And uh, that's why I was interested to, to learn about that as well, because it's a, it's a first for me and you've obviously been very successful. So it's good to learn from other people's experience. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah. So, like I said about the the Go Giver, it was a book that I picked up because I was recommended it. But the reason I had resistance to reading it sooner than up within the last year was, and this is leading to a question. So, uh, I picked up other books such as books that actually said sales on on the on the the front of the book about sales about money because for me to pay my bills for myself and my girlfriend at the time I wanted to focus on you know getting <laughs> I was a go getter um let's say but so I thought the the count the intuitive way would be okay. I, I need to read books on money, how to make money, how to uh, how to make sales. So I naturally searched for books on sales and marketing, and that's why I ended up putting Go Giver a wee bit further down. And I'm sure that's probably a similar uh, mindset other pe other business owners uh, intuitively are doing. So. Um, give, giving is counterintuitive when you need to pay the bills it seems to some people um, I did eventually obviously pick up the book and read it recently uh, but what would you say to a person who was maybe of the same mindset of me by delaying a book on giving uh, what would you say to that person who was uh, needing more income resisted reading your book for the same reasons well, first, the other books you were reading, um, 
are very important. Yeah, because it's important to read as many books on sales and and you know uh, wealth creation that you can. So uh, all those books are important. And when you said you were you know a go getter, we love go getters. Go getters are people of action. So you know as business people, one thing we know is that you know you can have the greatest ideas, best thoughts, the most wonderful of intent, but unless action is put into the mix, nothing's going to happen. So, you know, we love go get, we say be a go getter person of action and a go giver yeah. who's absolutely laser focused on providing immense value to others. We would say the opposite of a go giver is a go taker. Right. That's the right. person who feels entitled, you know, to just take, take, take without yeah. having added value to the other. Um, so, in terms of the title, sure, you know, if you, when you said the go giver, it sounds like you're just giving yourself away, but obviously that's not what the, what the book is about. When we, when we talk about giving in this context, we're talking about, again, creating immense value for others. Now, here's the thing. It's important to understand that if you really, really want to make a lot of money, and in and to the degree you're operating in a free market environment. When I say free market, I simply mean no one's forced to do business with you, right? When this is the case, the only way you can make money is by focusing on the given. Mm. Here's why. And I, I say this when I speak at sales conferences. Nobody's going to buy from you because you have a quota to meet. <laughs> They're not going to buy from you because you need the money. They're not even going to buy from you just because you're a really nice person. They're going to buy from you only because they believe that they will be better off by doing so than by not doing so. And this is great news for that entrepreneur or salesperson who truly has a heart for serving others. But, uh, but again, there's nothing about this that is uh, you know, woo woo or way out there or anything else. So this is how, you know, this is understanding human nature. They're not buying for your reasons so that you can make money. They're buying for their reasons so they can move closer to happiness. However, they understand happiness. So, so yeah, that's why it's so important to, to understand what we really mean by go giver. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. That, that's a, a good to hear your response on that. In the go givers sell more, you talk about a concept of silence, which is good for sales. And in a sales meeting where someone's maybe introverted, I know that's a label, but maybe they're not forthcoming and open to how you how how would you then go if they're not forthcoming and, and uh, open? How do you go and help them to open up to 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 get them to talk? Because if you're being silent and the other person's being silent, it's silent. <laughs> not a it's not a, a contest. Yeah. Of, uh, what yeah. we were talking about is listening. Mm. And yes. so when you listen, it means you're asking questions and then and then listening. You're staying silent while you listen as opposed mm -hmm. to interrupt. Uh, but in order for them, that person to be forthcoming with the information that's going to help you to help them, you've got to ask questions that they want to answer. Yes. That's why it's very important to, to understand what really drives and motivates that person. Once we know that, uh, you know, and again, we do that for, we, we learn this from asking questions and, and listening and clarifying because we don't we also even when they they answer we don't necessarily know that what they right. said is, is and what we understood are the same thing because mm -hmm. we all come at it from different sets of beliefs different ways of seeing the world we define terms differently and it's typically very unconscious mm -hmm. right so we need to consciously make sure that we are we are keeping us both on the same page right yeah yeah so it's about staying aware and uh, that's why silence is important and uh, truly listening rather than thinking about your your oh, thoughts <laughs> and, and agenda and beliefs. Yeah, yeah. And what are some good questions to ask to open someone up and to get them to talk about what you said, what motivates them? Uh, it depends on on what you sell and and, uh, okay. and 
situation. So, so basically, when you think about selling, okay, the old the old English root of the word sell was salan, which mm -hmm. which meant give. So okay. when you're selling, you're literally giving. Now, someone might say, well, isn't that just semantics, right? I don't think so. Uh, because when you're in the selling process, and let's say again, uh, uh, you have this person in front of you and you're in the sales conversation, you are in a selling situation. So when you're selling, what are you giving? Well, John and I suggest you're giving time, attention, counsel, education, empathy, and ultimately exceptional value. Now, when you say, what are the questions? Well, let's look at what selling really is, though. Selling is simply discovering what that other person needs, wants, and desires, and helping them to get it. Yeah. Now, as salespeople, we, we help people to do this through our product or service. So generally speaking, we have an idea of how it serves another person. What we've got to... Um, what we've got to um, come up with is a way of understanding first on a macro level what our general general uh, target market needs. Okay. Yes. And we also have to understand that people are all individuals, and so mm -hmm. even in that target market where we might know generally what they need, want, and desire, we don't know the individual uh, situations, needs, implications, and so forth for that that particular person. So we ask questions that allow us to get to the root of that and help that person to open up and actually tell us what they what they need. Yes. Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's um it's like doing your market research on your audience up front and then with that the the micro uh, details of what that individuals needs be would that be in a case of a one to one meeting like what we're doing. Yeah. Well, like, and you cover know, the that. More yeah, the more you can learn about that person individually in advance, all the better. And of course, we're we're much able to do that these days with social yes. media and uh, online searches and so forth. It's not, again, it always depends upon what you sell uh, to know if that if that's germane to you know to the person who's listening or watching this. But yeah. but generally speaking, we can get a really good idea in advance mm -hmm. as to the general picture. Of what that person needs, wants, and desires, and then we, you know, we go from there and yeah. make it as individual and personalized as we can. Yeah. And is there any uh, question that broad question that works across any industry that you've discovered in sales to uh, help with it up? Excuse me. I I don't think it's that it's it's one particular question. Yeah. I think it's covering basically you know what it is they need that is going to make it worthwhile for them because again we have to understand they're they're going to buy for their reasons yes you know harry brown used to say one of my mentors used to say uh you know salespeople all, all over ask the question how do i motivate a buyer to buy well you don't have to motivate a buyer to buy they're already motivated your only job is discovering what they're motivated by and then help fulfill that yeah yeah Okay. Okay. And um, you have a book on referrals and you, you do public speaking about that as well. What are some ways to generate, like maybe three ways to generate some referrals? Like I, I should go and read your book on that. I understand <laughs> that's my next soon on my reading list. So, um, but yeah, what are some tips on uh, referrals that you have? Um, well, the first is understanding it's the result of building relationships. Again, it all comes down to people, you know, all things being equal, people will do business with and refer business to those people they know, like, and trust. Mm -hmm. And you know, faster, quicker, more powerful way to elicit those feelings toward you and others than by genuinely and authentically moving from an I focus, right, to an other focus, making it about them. Right. Know? Uh, and then it's also important that once you've built that relationship, uh, that you create an environment where it makes it easy for them to, you know, to provide referrals to you, referrals and introductions. 
Um, and I think when we, you know, when we do that, now we create that context for it to take place. Right. Okay. Thank you. My pleasure. So relationship building you talk about is very important in business. What does someone, how does someone build relationships when they know it's important, but they, they lack time to invest into relationships? I found a uh, lot of. Well, you make time to invest in relationships. Yeah. You know, yeah. say I don't have time to, you know, it's like saying I don't have time to sleep or time to eat. You know, you can put it off, but it's probably not going to be. Yeah. Have a very <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so. The, the. Where that question comes from is. When. Someone has. For example. incoming people coming to them leads inquiries and they're at capacity of that have you been in a position where you've had to manage your time which i'm sure you do um in being able to build relationships with people as in hiring sure well i think in order to scale you have to do that yeah right? you is not able to uh you can only do so much within any any finite period of time so you've yeah. got to be able to scale. you've got to be able to to bring on people who can do a good job and support you and represent you well and and take care of the people they're supposed to be taking care of sure yeah and is there any tools or uh, systems uh, that can help with relationship building that you've come across well, any tool, uh, you know, and there are certainly excellent contact management, uh, yeah. relationship management tools and so forth, but the one that works best is the one you're going to use. And so, you know, okay. for some people, they can do all the bells, whistles, and they're very comfortable with that. With others, you know, like myself, it would drive me nuts. So, right. uh, you know, to me, you want to keep it as simple as possible, but not everybody is me. So people, you know, do it yeah. their own. Way, yeah. So. Okay. But, yeah, I would say, you know, just understand that the that that any kind of relationship building tools that you're using, they are just an offshoot of you um, and, mm -hmm. and tools are to be used. Uh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? They're they're used. Yeah, for the not a replacement. Yeah, a replacement. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. OK. Yeah. Uh, so like some of the ideas that. Um, I've seen people using relationship building with marketing has been like, like you and I are using it. I've seen you, you post on social media, um, Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook. Um, e do you use email marketing at all for relationship building? Yeah. Uh, for relationship building. I think everything we do, my business partner, Kathy and, 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 and I, um, you know, when we send out, our emails, well, I guess, yeah, it would be because we have a daily impact email that goes out Monday through Friday. So yeah, that's a form of building relationships. Yeah. Yeah. But again, it's not a one-on-one -on -one, uh, type of relationship, yeah. one for many, but I also get a lot of people writing me back and whenever they do, I answer. And, okay. You know, yeah. And, yeah. you know, uh, so yeah, I, I guess I, I, the answer to that would be, would be yes. Yeah. And when you get responses, um, mm -hmm. such as you you, uh, you commented in probably every post that I've published um, mm -hmm. as a global best-selling author do you ever find it hard to respond to everyone sometimes but uh, you know I, I think it comes down to when you hold something as a high enough value yes you can do it yeah okay then and okay. I believe First of all, it's just a good, it's a good way to do business, but more importantly, it's just a good way to be a person. And yeah. if someone acknowledges you or says something nice about you, I just feel it's, it's yeah. the right yeah. to answer. And yeah. Acknowledge that. Okay. Yeah. That's um, good to, good to hear that as well. Um, and how do you get better at receiving? You talked about it in the Go-Giver and the second book, the uh, Go-Giver Sell More, that if you can't receive, you're not going to be very good at sales because when you're sort of, if you're closed off to when your time comes to take a payment. So how does someone get better 
at that point of uh, receiving? Well, it's first acknowledging if it's if it's a problem, it's acknowledging there's a problem, right? Because most of again, the way we live our lives is through a, what I call an unconscious operating system. It's based on beliefs that were handed to us when we were very young, that the world around us has, has given us, that we have just unconsciously accepted. Um, and there's such an anti-prosperity mindset uh, throughout much of the world that it can very easily get into a person's head, both their conscious and their unconscious, which is, the, of course, the most powerful aspect. So, so it's first understanding that, it, that it's an issue. Uh, mm -hmm. Next, it's determining how to go about getting past that. Uh, it begins with questioning premises. When you find yourself not receiving, you've got to catch yourself and ask why. Why am I refusing this? You know, if I have earned this, why am I refusing this? Or even if it's, uh, even if it's something somebody has a, a compliment and somebody says, oh, you know, and they give you a compliment, uh, are you going, oh, no, no, no. You know, are you doing that reflexively? Or do you say, oh, thank you. That's very kind of you and, and allowing yourself to receive it. So, so we need to, to kind of really be aware and we cannot, we can yeah. overcome something that we're not aware of in the first place. And I believe uh, it's important to make a study of prosperity. There are many fantastic prosperity teachers out there, people like okay. Randy and um, uh, Sharon Lecter and Ellen Rogan and, and David Nagel and, and uh, you know, Ken Honda and so many people who write and speak and blog and, and so forth that I, uh, that I really, really believe that because of all the the anti-prosperity garbage that comes in from everywhere throughout yeah. the day. I believe it's important to to proactively study prosperity. Right. Get that who, who was the first author that you mentioned before, Sharon? Uh, uh, Randy Gage. Right. Okay. I didn't hear that. Okay. Yeah, that, that's, that's a really good uh, idea to, you know, fight against, fight against that, essentially, to proactively learn uh, the habit of receiving and learning how to receive sure yeah okay um i got uh, some other people involved in in the in some questions they wanted to ask uh i mentioned uh we were doing an interview um i am aware we uh how, how long have we got left um well let, why don't we do another five minutes and yeah. that would be yeah okay then um so the question was have you always uh, does do you always sorry have you always had the natural ability to be nice to people uh, did he learn this skill naturally uh, that's a great question very very great question i don't think it was necessarily my inclination to to be one way or the other. However, I was very fortunate to have a great example in my parents who were just very nice, kind people. Uh, my dad had wonderful people skills that he did. It was a gift for him. He just had a very right. natural interest in others, knew how to make people feel genuinely good about themselves. So I got to watch him. Yeah. With all the books I've read on people skills, and I've read hundreds, and I enjoy all of them and have learned from all of them, uh, really what I learned from my dad just by observing mm -hmm. was uh, I, I could, I could go just with that. Yeah. <laughs> because okay, it's okay. Right. So really though, it was, you know, because I did have a, I did have my anger issues and, and when people did things that elicited my being upset or bothered or offended, eh, I was a grudge holder. I could, I could be kind of a, a uh, nasty person when it when it happened and you know I look back and regret a lot of that but I also know that at one certain point I made a decision that that wasn't how I wanted to live life right from that point on I just you know I I turned and uh decided to go that route and again uh utilizing the wisdom of my dad as a guiding principle as a guiding light uh and with everything I've learned about it and practiced that has you know, over the last 35 years or so, uh, I think made me a, a nicer human being. Yeah, right. Yeah, so it was uh, an awareness, as you said, and then a choice to to change. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Question on that, do 
you think everyone can become aware of their own behavior or do they need a coach to help them with that? Or is it something that any anyone can become aware of themselves or do they need a moment to snap out of that and become aware? Well, I think it's both. Yeah. I mean, anyone can become aware, but we're usually not going to become aware until something elicits us yes. doing that. Yeah. That might be a book that you read. Mm-hmm. It might be a person who says something. It might be a coach or a mentor or a family member. It could be, you know. Yeah. And so, uh, so I think however that awareness takes place, how it, however it occurs, as long as it does, that's the Im- important yeah. one. But we yeah. need to be willing to embrace that. Yeah. And it's obvious that you do read books, but the question that um, Alf- Alfred asked is, did he read books and what books? So maybe give us your top sales book, your favorite book you've ever read that's impacted you the most. Uh, yeah. Uh, that would be very difficult. <laughs> right. It made a huge impact on me. Yeah. Whether it's you know, Carnegie's How to Win Friends and Influence People, whether it's, you know, Harry's Brown, Harry Brown's book, The Secret of Selling Anything, yeah. which is really understanding human nature and respecting human nature um peace power and plenty by orson sweat martin written in 1910 was another one that was just uh, or i think 1906 another one that is just brilliant so uh, there's just so many i, I yeah yeah you know a favorite <laughs> question yeah yeah so um what what about sales is there any um books on sales that you recommend and that might have been in that list. Yeah, the Harry Brown's book, The Secret right, of okay. Sales, which was written basically in, in the 1960s. It was never meant to be published. His his widow actually found a training that he did for his sales team, right. uh, hard drive, and she she told another person about it who who uh, helped her find an independent publisher. Right. And uh, I did a blog post on it at berg.com slash blog if you, if right. you put in the secret of selling or or put in harry brown b-r-o-w-n-e you can see a review i did on the book i think it's right. the most important sales book probably it's ever been written right um, okay yeah well okay yeah we, we will definitely check that out um there's some people watching us live here um just see if before we go if they have left any comments uh, there is three comments here but i can't see them I'll see if I can get it on my Facebook on here. Yeah, so don't reinvent the wheel. Keep going. Yeah, no no questions, just people in, uh, supporting us. Well, thanks again, Bob, for joining. I, I really appreciate everything that you're doing. Uh, your books have made a big impact on me. Uh, as I mentioned in one of the videos that you commented on, that it really opened up that given spirit again that I always had in a lost and I came across your book and, and read it, and that pretty much was all I needed to hear, uh, just getting into that mindset. So it really impacted my life, and I'm sure it's impacted many other people's lives. So keep doing what you're doing. Uh, um, we, we all really appreciate you. That's very kind. Thanks, Ben. And thanks, everybody, for listening in. Wishing you all a great day. Thank you. Bye just now. <laughs>